can get this um, on video right now. We are recording right now. We just want to make sure that you agree to us using this particular video for um, our purposes on YouTube, on social media, um, on our own wiki or website. Um, if you agree with that, then are you all right with this, Ashley? Yes, I agree. Fantastic. All right, so thanks a lot. Um, I would just probably uh, want to ask you, though, you are an oil sands consultant right now, yes? Yes, that's right. Primarily in oil sands tailings and uh, mostly involved on the engineering design side. Okay. Um, and so um, I'm not too certain how familiar you are with iGEM and what we do right now. Um, so oh, uh, actually, how familiar are you with synthetic biology, with iGEM and any of that kind of stuff? Just the brief overview that Maggie gave me and what I could glean from the uh, from the website. So not overly familiar, no. Okay. So um, iGEM is a international competition that's run um, that's undergraduate driven. So each summer we end up doing a project and then going off and present it off to um, other um, other teams in regionals, for example, in Stanford. And then now we're heading off to the World Championships at MIT. And so um, what we wanted to do for this particular project is we wanted to. Um, ask various people from industry about what, um, how our project can be further improved, um, and um, how we would be, and uh, whether this would be actually a useful thing for our, um, for the oil sands. And so, um, just kind of like to quickly summarize what we're doing with our project. We're trying to engineer bacteria that can um, detect and remediate various compounds like naphthenic acids. Uh, from tailings ponds, uh, oil sand, like oil sand tailings ponds, rather. And so, um, what the, how this happens is that we have um, this contained bioreactor system, and so our bacteria sit here swimming in it. Uh, tailings pond water goes in. The bacteria convert them into hydrocarbons, which we can skim off, and then um, they get killed along the way as they leave. But then the bacteria that we engineer also have this built-in kill switch mechanism that allows them to. That basically, once they, if they ever escape the bioreactor, which is rather unlikely, but in the event that they do, they'll die, and then their DNA will be completely destroyed, and so um, they won't really be able to get into the environment. Uh, based on that, uh, we just wanted to ask you: Do you actually see something like this being useful in the oil sands, or? Definitely, depending on scale up, uh, it would definitely be an asset in oil sands industry. And that's actually one of my main questions is uh, how have you uh, and the team uh, looked at the uh, scale-up modularization, uh, winterization? How do you envision this actually uh, going forward being commercialized, industrialized? Well, um, we're st we are still kind of looking into that. Actually, we wanted to ask you whether you, uh, whether you see any kind of problems that would come about. But winterization being one of them, yes, this is dealing with an environment that's very cold up in Fort Mac, so that makes it a big problem. We, I think, uh, like I'm not really the engineers, I'm not part of the engineering team who has designed the bioreactor, but um, I scale-up is always a pretty huge problem there, and uh, we did build this uh, prototype bioreactor. I don't know what you've seen on our yep. wiki. It's about a one-liter beaker like that. Um, I believe they've talked to a number of people about scale-up, but I'm not really certain myself. Okay. But that's certainly something that we need to look into is scaling up winterization, being able to kind of acclimatize to the weather that's up there. And, you know, is that kind of what you're going for? Yeah, and also just the, the throughput of the our reactor itself, just uh, how much of a uh, uh, how much of a concentration of, uh, of naphthenic acids are required and uh, what type of residence time and how large can, can that be scaled up uh, to facilitate a commercial application. All right, that sounds good. Uh, we'll definitely have to look into that. That's a good uh, next step for us. Then um, I don't, um, I don't know. Just based on your experience, how, like, how much have you been exposed to biology in the oil sands? Have has it been something that a lot of people have been pushing for to use alternate methods instead of just the chemical ones that they've been going for right now? In about the past uh, four years, uh, there's been a definite increase in particularly the number of research papers being presented at uh, Oil Sands Tailings Conference relating to uh, the part of it's just the understanding the biology of the tailings ponds, but also uh, initial discussions of, uh, of uh, using biological techniques for uh, remediation and, uh, and for treatment. Um, 
Uh, my area of focus has been more on the on the tailings slurry side, so mature fine tailings and the the sludge that forms in in the ponds, and mm. uh, seeing some of the applications of uh, being researched for uh, uh, potential uh, bio treatment of of MFT. Uh, it's been about the last two years. Uh, those types of papers have started to be presented. I haven't seen any. Um, uh, larger scale uh, uh, application uh, been been tested yet. It's it's been on a relatively small lab scale, so uh, that's as much as I've seen of it. It's definitely become a, a niche within uh, the the R and D side. Okay, so people are actually kind of looking for other uh, for biological methods yep. then. Kind of. Well, that's also that's really good to hear then, considering what we've been trying to do. This is the first time I've seen uh, um, uh, used for uh, detection. Um, there's been a number of uh, uh, sensor, s small sensor development um, probes that I've seen presented for detection of phenic acids or other uh, uh, toxic material in, in the ponds. Um, uh, but this is the first time I've seen that uh, using a biological method. Interesting. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not really so certain how much you're familiar with kind of existing methods of remediation then do, um, because what we're trying to do is we're also trying to see how whether it's whether the process that we're doing right now is more cost effective than existing methods do you do you, do people really kind of focus on remediating various toxins in this right now do you just kind of let them settle down and bury them well the, uh, the areas that I'm working on are primarily for the uh, yeah, that happens a little bit. It's a bit weak. Um, it should be okay right now. Yeah, now it's perfect again. Yeah. Okay, so um, um, before you can even start uh, looking at reclamation or remediation of the tailings ponds, you have to remove and, and dewater and dry out the, the sludge, the, the material fine tails. So that's been the, the major focus of what I've been looking at. Um, not so much for the specific uh, toxins that are still present in that, just to get a, a trafficable surface that you can actually get equipment and uh, and uh, and use some of the other techniques for, for treatment at that point. Uh, so it's kind of the very initial step to, to the eventual treatment there. Um, and most of what I've seen for Longer term relies a lot on uh, in situ sort of bioremediation from uh, pre-existing uh, microorganisms and, and you know pathways that are present in in the systems itself to get uh, eventually a, a clear clean runoff from uh, a reclaimed tailings deposit. Um, but in terms of the um, the front end and getting to that first step. Of a, of a deposit which is trafficable, that's been a major focus driven uh, by regulatory as well as economic drivers in different operations. Okay. Uh, what, uh, what kind of um, regulatory bodies are we talking about here? Uh, ERCB Directive 74 is the, uh, is the primary uh, directive relating to uh, tailings reclamation and it's uh, uh, the treatment and um, disposal of these fluid fine tailings or mature fine tailings, the, the sludge that's present in the ponds. Okay, treatment disposal of the tailings, the yep. actual tailings itself. So for okay. most of the tailings ponds, you only have a, a relatively thin clear water layer on the surface, and most of the volume is filled with, uh, with mature fine tailings of a 35, 33%. Uh, I see. Um, okay, and so that means we're actually, so most of these toxins that we're trying to target then, would, would you, do you know if they're actually kind of in that thin, clear water layer, layer or if they're actually mostly stuck in the fluid fine tailings there? A lot of them, I believe, uh, segregate to the, to the water layer. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know specifically the, uh, you know, the prevalence of different toxins with different, different layers in there, but there's a lot of water in the mature fine tailings, so it's, it's... It would be still so processable, I hope. So. Okay. Oh, you're cutting out a little bit there. Uh, hmm. Really don't like it when that happens. Sorry about that. Maybe if I switch to the computer mic instead of the headset. Nope, now we're back. Okay. So, all right. 
Um, actually, this should be about all we really need. We just uh, we really do appreciate your time. Thanks a lot for uh, spending a little bit of time. It's a shame that um, the weather's not really permitting for a personal interview, but that's caliber for you. Yep. Um, if we have any questions, if it's all right to just kind of send you an email or two, um, would that be all right? And I've jotted down some questions here. Too. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah, if you have any a couple questions for us as well, that would be. This is definitely a good time to hear them. Okay. Um, so the throughput I was talking about. The first thing I wanted to ask about, as well as uh, you're focusing on naphthenic acids, but uh, uh, and a couple other compounds. But uh, I was wondering if you. Uh, the group has been following some of the discussions about whether a lot of the toxins that were characterized as naphthenic acids are actually naphthenic acids or or are they different types of like water extractable uh, water acid extractable organics uh, and I can provide some uh, uh, some links to papers uh, on that topic oh that'd be fantastic yeah um, the way that it's kind of going right now is that we've kind of just been treating a lot of our most um, acids um, well, most acidic hydrocarbons that are found in the tailings ponds and kind of treating, treating them as naphthenic acids just because no one really knows what they are. But um, the point of the project is that we're trying to get rid of that um, acid group there and try and turn them into hydrocarbons that are burnable in any way. So um, that's kind of what we're going for. Um, the If we ended up targeting things that are slightly more than naphthenic acids, then that's good for us too because I'm fairly certain a lot of those are not really great to have around in the tailings ponds either. No. No. Okay. And uh, the uh, um, I'm interested in just finding out what the limitations are in terms of solids content and uh, and sludge content in in the reactors itself. Because a lot of the volume, like I said, is uh, is a uh, is a thick sludgy material. Whether that MFT or some light MFTs would be treatable uh, through the same method or or not. Hmm. Um, that, again, is not really anything that I'm too familiar with myself because, again, I'm not part of the engineering uh, side of this, but that is a very good point. We've been trying, we were thinking of just doing something like a filter system to come out, but of course, if it's all sludge, then that's impossible because filters will clog up in no time flat. Um, do you have a, do you have an idea maybe what we can possibly do to kind of treat the, the sludge area thing? It's, it'd be difficult. I would see this more uh, being uh, used in parallel with uh, with uh, NFT drying technique, where maybe the runoff water uh, um, from a from a drying deposit would be what you would focus on on treating. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just just curious about that piece. There's uh, this water is not necessarily clean water, so any design would have to be uh, not overly sensitive to uh, uh, the salt and the grime and the sludge and all that stuff, and the bitumen because that's uh, uh, will gum up everything. Yeah. Right. Um, we I think the idea though is we're trying to take some most of the clear water layer that's up on the top though. But of course, you you when you start sucking up all that water, you're just going to pick up a lot of the tailings underneath yeah, it yeah. as well. So. That is something that we'll probably have to address, and I'll pass that along to the uh, engineers that we have here. Okay. Yeah, I'll jot down. I've got a couple written here. I'll send it as an email. Those were the, the major questions in, in relation to uh, sort of industrialization scale up. And, and that's exactly what we needed to hear, too. So that, I'll definitely pass that along. So. Okay. All right, fantastic. Uh, thank you so much, then. Um, that should be everything. If there's anything else, of course, we'll correspond by email, and we'll... Get the rest of that organized. Thank you very much. This looks like a really interesting project, and uh, okay. I hope that, uh, that you find success. Okay, thanks. All right, see you later. Bye. Take care.